In this video, we're going to install VS Code, Python, Node.js, and write Hello World application, CURL, Apache MySQL, PHP, and write Hello World on PHP as well, PHP MyAdmin, Veeam, Git, and set up web development working environment on fresh installed Ubuntu 20.04. Hello guys, what's up? The Code is here and welcome to my channel. On this channel, I do coding tutorials and challenges, so if you are new here, consider subscribing. Several days ago, Ubuntu 20.04 was released with a lot of features and long-term support. I'm not going to cover all the features added in 20.04, just I'm going to mention one very important addition for developers. That's dark mode. Now you can switch your Ubuntu 20.04 into dark mode and basically you will never see widescreen in your file explorer and settings application. In this video I mostly deal with terminal, but sometimes you might see widescreen in file explorer and settings application. I just forgot to switch to the dark mode when I was recording on this video. Apologize. I'm guilty. But as I mentioned, I work mostly in terminals, so that should not be a problem for you. I hope. In the first three minutes of the video, I'm going to quickly set up Ubuntu 20.04 on my virtual box, and then I will go through installation process. If you find this video useful, I will really appreciate if you like, subscribe, and share. Okay, let's jump into the video. Go to the following website and click the 64-bit PC MD64 desktop image to download ISO file. Once it's downloaded, open Oracle VirtualBox Manager and click this new button. I'm going to give it a name and memory size, create, next, next. I'm going to give it 30 gigabytes and we have already created VDI file. Now I'm going to click settings and configure a couple of things. In system, I'm going to, in processors, I'm going to give it four processor, okay. In display, I'm going to give it a maximum display. And in storage, I'm going to choose the ISO file we just downloaded. Choose a disk file and click on this. Okay, we're good to go. Click OK and start. You will see the following screen and you need to just click start. This process will take a couple of seconds, so you, you just need to wait. Let me close these notifications and click Install Ubuntu. Continue. I'm going to go with default settings. I'm going to click Install now. Choose my local time zone. Let's give it a name and password. Okay, I'm going to get my coffee until this is done. So here it finished the installation and let's restart machine and put the new Ubuntu 20. Just hit the enter. Here I have my fresh installed Ubuntu 20.04. Let's keep the settings for now. Okay, first of all, I'm going to enlarge this on full screen, but this doesn't work out of the box. We need to insert guest editions CD image and just run that. We're going to provide our password we gave on the installation. Okay, let's hit the enter and reboot our machine. Okay, I'm going to view this on full screen mode. And here we have fresh new installed Ubuntu 20.04 ready for anything. Okay, first of all, I'm going to increase the scaling a little bit from my display settings. Okay, good. Then I'm going to remove some things what I don't use. 
Okay, the next thing is to install Chrome because I generally use Google Chrome. Okay, I just downloaded a Chrome deb file. So let's just open this. Okay, I'm going to right click on this and open with other application. By default, it opens with Archive Manager. Okay, so I'm going to open with Software Install. Click Select. Okay, and here we go. Software Install Ubuntu Software is ready. Let's open this and click Install button. Again, our password is necessary. Okay, here we have Chrome installed. I'm going to close this one. Click Start. Chrome, here we go. Uh, click OK. And I just want to move this at the top. It was added to favorites, which is what I wanted, actually. And now let's install VS Code. I'm going to close Firefox. I'm not going to use it for now. So as soon as VS Code deb file is downloaded, let's just click on this, open software install, and click install button from here. Okay, so here we have our VS Code, and let's just open it as well, and pin it into favorites. Add to favorites. Okay. So I'm going to remove this VirtualBox guest edition disk drive. So let's just close this one. And here we have VS Code. Okay, good. Now I'm going to install Python. Actually, if we type Python in the terminal, we see that we don't have Python, but we have Python 3. So if we just type Python 3, here we have Python interpreter. Uh, I'm going to exit from here by typing Ctrl and Z. And actually, I'm going to go to my desktop and create a Python directory. And I'm going to open that directory with VS Code. We already have Python installed on system. Now let's install Python extension for VS Code. The first one, which is the most popular one and has 19 downloads, let's click Install on this. While this is installing, let's create file index.py and let's just print right here hello world and let's just also print some arithmetic operations like 2 in power 3 save this one asks me to install uh, python which is in process actually and it will be installed so we actually don't need to wait until this is installed in order to run the following script so i'm going to open terminal and from here i'm going to run Okay, I got it. Uh, Python 3 index pi. Okay, so let's just close the left side. Hit the enter. And here we have hello world and 8. So let's see the extension. Okay, it's installed. So we have this Python extension installed for Python development, which is awesome. As far as we have already Python up and running, now let's install Node.js. Okay, in the Chrome, I'm going to type node.js.org go into download section scroll down and I'm going to click install node.js with package manager okay let's scroll down and click Debian and Ubuntu based Linux distributions and down below we have this link which redirects us to the github page actually we can run right here at the moment sudo apt get install node.js but this one will install node.js version 10. if version 10 is okay for you you can go ahead and run this and you will have node.js version 10. however i encourage you to install the latest version so i'm gonna cancel this let's open github page and down below we have these under Debian and Ubuntu based dis distributions, we have installation instructions. Okay, we just need to grab the following code and run uh, depending on which version we want to install. So I'm going to go with version number 12. Okay, so I'm going to copy the following code. Actually, I'm going to copy this line first and just run this. And oops, we don't have CURL. 
let's install it. sudo apt get install CURL. Okay, CURL is installed. Let's paste the code and run it again. And after this, we need to run sudo apt-get install minus y node.js. Hit the enter. Okay, and if we just type, let me clear up, if we just type node minus v, we see the version 12. If we type npm minus v, we see version number 6. Awesome. Let's create Hello World application using Node.js. In the desktop, I'm going to create Node.js directory and open it with VS Code. Let's create right here index.js and just type console log hello from Node. Okay, just save this. I'm going to open terminal and call Node index.js and we see hello from node. So we can already start building node.js applications. Oops, my coffee is getting cold. Just give me two seconds. Okay, now let's install LAMP stack. So I'm going to close this and in the terminal I'm going to run sudo apt get install apache2. Hit the enter. As soon as this is done we can type localhost in the browser and if we see this Apache welcome page, we're good to go. Next, we need to install PHP and Apache mod PHP package, okay? Let me increase this on full screen. Here we go. So hit the enter. This will give us to write PHP code on our system and run it through Apache web server. By default, when we install PHP on Ubuntu 20.04, it installs the latest ver version, PHP 7.4, which is the best version for now, which is the latest version as well, and the best version for now. So I'm going to type um, PHP minus V, and I see this PHP version 7.4, which is awesome. Let's navigate to the var www.html4 folder, which basically is a root directory for localhost. And right here, I can create an index.php file. Okay, I'm going to call sudo vim index.php. Oops, I don't have vim. sudo apt get install vim. If you don't know what is vim, it's just a text editor. sudo vim index.php. And right here, I'm going to type I to go in the insert mode, PHP, echo, hello from PHP. Okay, let's just save this. And if we just try to access localhost, we don't see any change right here, simply because in the following directory, ls la, we have index.html as well. And by default, Apache looks up index.html first and then index.php. To change this, we need to open the following file etc apache2 mods available dir conf file. Hit the enter. And right here, we just need to change the ordering of the files. Okay, so I'm going to move index.html after index.php. Just save this and we need to install, we need to restart Apache. Here we go, and if we just reload the browser, right now we see hello from PHP. Okay, one more thing right here. If we just observe this, every file is owned by root. And if when we start working with VS Code, it will be impossible to change anything right here in this file because VS Code runs with your current user, okay? The code hole in this case. So the best uh, solution for this for me is that to run Apache with the Cotolic user and change everything to the Cotolic user from here. Okay, so I'm going to run sudo chown the Cotolic, the Codeholic, minus r recursively the current folder. Okay, hit the enter. And if I type ls minus la, I see everything is owned by the code holic. Now I can open everything from here using VS Code and change anything I want. Just if Apache generates some files, whether it will be uploaded file or some log file, then this will be owned by root. Okay, it's good to change for your local installation the Apache running user as well. So for this, let's go to etc apache2 env vars file 
Right here on line 16 and 17, we see the Apache Run user, Apache Run group, and let's just change this into our current user. Let's save this, and we need to restart Apache. And here we go. Now we won't have any permission issues when making some changes in this folder. Now let's install MySQL. Okay, MySQL is installed, and we can check it by running sudo service mysql status and we see that mysql service is up and running it's active as well let's now install php my admin sudo apt get install php my admin on the following screen apache tool is highlighted but not selected okay and we need to hit space to select apache you see so arrow keys navigate space selects so click ok click yes and we're going to type mysql application password you can type any password you want and after this is finished if we type in the browser localhost slash php my admin we will see the following screen which is basically a login page of php my admin let's try to log in with the password you just gave and it doesn't work simply because we have not set the same password on mysql level okay for this i'm going to run sudo mysql and right here we are in mysql console and i'm going to run alter user root at localhost identified with mysql native password and your password this password must match to the password we entered in php myadmin installation hit enter on this and just exit from this MySQL console using Ctrl and Z. Okay, let's open browser again and let's click go. And here we are logged in. Let me zoom out a little bit. On the left side, we see the databases right here. And this is the PHP MyAdmin. Okay, now as far as we already have LAMPStack fully installed, let's open VS Code and right here install PHP extension php hit the enter php intellisense seems to be the most popular extension for php autocompletion and syntax highlighting so let's just install this okay it's installed we don't need vs code anymore i'm going to close this one as well and the last thing we want to install is the simplest thing it's git sudo apt git install git And here's my git output. All right, that's it for this video, guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like and subscribe buttons and help me by sharing this video to your friends. Thank you once again and see you in the next time.